Hey, congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. It's Dr. Seuss's birthday, and we've got a pleasantly, delightfully tacky episode coming up. This is RVNN Live. It's Friday, March 2nd. This is uh, RVNN Live, brought to you in part by Pet Hub and GoToMeeting. Today's program brought to you by Pet Hub. Protect your pet for pennies a day with critical contact, medical, and dietary information on a smartphone scannable ID tag. And by GoToMeeting, affordable online meetings that work so you can do more and travel less. Hey everyone, it is Courtney Wallen, and as you uh, saw there, if you're on the live stream, I am worst when I'm scripted, and I tried to script myself, Andy. Um, uh, you epic know, fail. Dr. Seuss <laughs> in the morning, I could understand, but but yeah, it's noon. You should be able to just <laughs> rattle that right off. And you think, um, I don't know, reading it most of my life, I'd be able to say things from his books, but I am not. But anyways, it's Dr. Seuss's birthday. He's a hundred and eight years old he would have been he was born wow. in 1904 we'll talk about that more but we are joined by a really great guest today we are joined by elizabeth from delightfully tacky.com elizabeth how are you i'm doing great <laughs> you're not Am andy mccaskey uh, there. <laughs> there it is uh we appreciate you coming on today's show and uh if you go to delightfully tacky.com you're going to find a lot of great things elizabeth is a uh jack Galen of all trades. Uh, she does some fashion blogging, some artwork, some really great s things. I even saw that you are a singer as well. Um, but what we want to focus on today is uh, you are a lady who is quite adventurous. You took uh, three months and did 11,000 miles in a vintage Winnebago. Uh, we want to talk about that and uh, a, an article in particular from your uh, blog uh, that we're going to kind of focus on today is uh, tips for your own brave adventure and uh, we'll kind of step through that so first of all Elizabeth tell us a little bit about why you chose to do this three-month sabbatical and and just adventure by yourself um well I had finished college and I was going um, I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do and I had applied for grad school and I was kinda going to grad school online and it wasn't really working out that well uh, I just wasn't enjoying the courses and so I kind of sat back and thought to myself if I could do anything what would I do and the answer was um, get a vintage Winnebago Brave and drive around the country so I started doing that instead. <laughs> I love it. We admire your just willingness to do it and um, there's a lot of things in your blog you talk about and um, the part of that was you grew up in Alaska and after this trip you really didn't have a complete purpose to stop and live somewhere but you did end up in uh, Tacoma Washington is where you're at now and you have kind of loved it and stayed there mm-hmm yeah I I mean I went to school in the Pacific Northwest so uh, and growing up in Alaska the Pacific Northwest is pretty similar so yeah. uh, I enjoy it here for sure good well I haven't been on Andy well, been now on you had quite a you had quite a route because uh, it wasn't like you were trying to go to the furthest diagonal distance but you came pretty close to that didn't you yeah I uh, I ended up in um, Tybee Island Georgia is the furthest I went um, I think that was where I hit the Atlantic so I couldn't go any further <laughs> um, I think I may have gone further when I was in Florida but um, I only just barely grazed Florida on my way back to the West Coast. <laughs> okay, so so now this uh, was a three-month adventure, and I understand that that th this was a solo trip most of the time or the entire time. Uh, the whole time, um, I had my dad. He <laughs> let me borrow his dog, um, <laughs> which was a little bit of you know it was hard for him I think, but <laughs> it was nice to have a little companion. Um, as in terms of having a pet around, but yeah, as far as humans go, I was the the solo adventurer. Yeah. D did you set out a certain goal of uh, so many miles per day, uh, and and how much planning did you do as opposed to, to serendipity? Um, it was for the most part, I just drove. I had I had planned on driving for as long as I wanted to. I thought maybe I would kind of settle down and maybe 
stay in one place for a month or so and maybe get like a little job or something. But I ended up really liking just driving. So I would drive quite quite a bit each day, um, <clears throat> some days longer than others. But for the most part, I just drove. And then when I saw some place that looked interesting, I ended up stopping there and staying for a night. Yeah, now I saw that uh, on your blog you talked about that you're, that you're not really a smartphone type person, but it was valuable on your trip. So I have to ask, what was on your iPod for all those miles? <laughs> Um, I actually didn't have that much music, and the the brave, the like the speakers didn't work very well, and the radio didn't work well. So I just I didn't listen to any radio the entire time. Uh, I mostly when I was really needing some music, I turned on my iPhone and held it to my ear because <laughs> the engine was too loud. I couldn't hear it very well. <laughs> yeah. So now, what year and how did you find this particular uh, Winnebago? It sounded like you got a pretty good deal. <laughs> yeah, it was a 1973 Winnebago Brave, um, which is what I wanted. I I was jonesing for a Brave in the early 70s. Um, and so I set out looking for it um, on Craigslist, uh, came across a couple lemons uh, that would have needed a ton of work, and then I saw this gem, which uh, actually is the spinning image of a painting that I painted two years prior. Ooh, uh, it's a little was, spooky. I see the back there. I was gonna yeah. say, that. <laughs> um, but it was owned by a uh, an Air Force mechanic, <laughs> so he had done all of the work, all of the mechanical work. It only broke down once, and that was on the very first day. <laughs> well. <laughs> Glad it only did that then and then continued to work well. I actually finally have pulled up your uh, route here, and I just want to bring that up real quick. And it's there. Let's go. There we go. There we go. There's your map of where you went. So you started up here in Alaska and then went down the West Coast and then the southern states, and then down to, well, Georgia-ish, yeah. and then back up, so. Was this generally in the summertime? What time of the year? When did you leave and and, uh, and, and return? Um, I left Alaska on September 20th. Um, so going through Canada was a bit chilly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but by the time I got down to the southern states, it was fine. Um, yeah, it was actually ended up being kind of nice being in the south as opposed to being in northern states. <laughs> mm -hmm. how, mu how much of the time were you able to uh, cook your own meals and kind of save money that way uh, versus uh, trying to sample the local uh, local uh, cuisine? Um, pretty primarily I cooked for myself. Um, every once in a while there would be something interesting that I would want to eat at like a local establishment, but uh, for the most part um, it, it made more sense <laughs> financially to hit up the super Walmart where there's a ton of parking for Winnebago's and head in there and get some food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and was, did you kind of evenly split between boondocking and, uh, uh, and, and, uh, campgrounds or, uh, did you use parks? Where, where were some of the places that you stayed? Um, I pretty much only stayed in RV parks, mostly just because as a young woman on, on my own, I didn't feel as comfortable boondocking. Uh, I did it a couple nights. Um, I think in Walmart parking lots, but um, yeah, I and that was a big big expenditure uh, as far as staying like in you know KOA parks or legitimate RV parks. But um, it did make me feel safer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. In, in your blog, you kind of talked about how in this uh, ten tips for your own brave adventure, you kind of talk about. Uh, you know, getting a part of some of these clubs and you'll receive discounts. And of course, you were kind of on a budget um, doing this on your own and those definitely help. But at the end of the day, sometimes the boondocking was fun. But if you pulled into a co KOA, it was kind of like very refreshing to know that you were going to have all those amenities there and you didn't have to worry about much. So those were uh, a pleasant su surprise every once in a while. Yeah, definitely. Having a KOA was KOA uh, was always kind of like a a nice rest stop because you knew that you would have you know nice showers and uh, laundry or you know and you'd always have like really good hookups and they generally always have internet which 
obviously in my industry is <laughs> yep. necessary. <laughs> yeah, I was going to talk to you about that real quick too, because we know a lot of people out there want to be travel bloggers of some sort, and you were doing blogging on this trip as well. So if we could talk real quick about connectivity and how you kind of maintain that throughout your trip with, it's kind of, you never know what's going to happen. And maybe some of the iPhone apps, I know on this uh, blog as well that you talk about some iPhone apps that you couldn't have lived without. And I think that's really important for people to hear different perspectives on those as well. Yeah, um, as far as internet went, I got um, one of the AT&T uh, internet USB things where you just like shove it in your computer and then it lights up and connects to internet if you have, I think it's it's if you have 3G um, connectivity available. Um, but uh, I tried to stay at places that I could have good internet, mostly because the, uh, the internet card... Um, it only allowed so much uploads per month, mm -hmm. which for me, I'm always, you know, I'm uploading a lot of pictures. So that did, that was a little bit prohibitive, but as long as I coupled it with, um, you know, finding a coffee shop with free Wi-Fi or, um, I mean, there was also, I, I had an app where you could find free Wi-Fi nearby, <laughs> which was kind of fun. So Yeah. Yeah. You know, as I'm looking here at your site, uh, when my wife sees your blog, uh, you know, your, your husband set an impossibly high barrier <laughs> or, or, you know, impossibly high mark. Tell us about that a little bit. My husband? <laughs> yes, the proposal. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, well, I had been working at a camp all summer, and so we didn't really get to see each other very often. Um, and it was the last day of camp. Uh, I was coming home the next day, and he was like, well, can I come out? Um, maybe we can do a sunrise photo shoot. And as someone who likes taking pictures and stuff like that, <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't like waking up early, but sunrise is beautiful out there. So I was like, yeah, sure, that sounds fun. We didn't have any pictures of us together. So uh, we got up in the morning and went down to the beach. And <laughs> as I was taking uh, as the self timer was going off, he he got down on one knee and asked me. So that was pretty exciting. <laughs> I would say it, so. It is. Now, does does he uh, is he signing up for the for the RV? Is he uh, going to be uh, as much of an enthusiast as you are? Um, he actually was going to come with me on the the big trip, but he uh, chickened out. He didn't really have enough money, and he had a he couldn't like quit his job. Uh, and lose his house and all that so he ended up opting not to come but he was one of the main reasons i i came back to tacoma yeah and I, we're kind of wrapping up here and i just want you as a 20 something uh to another 20 something and to encourage others out there 20 something or not to go and do it you talk about you took nine months just to kind of save up for this. What are some words that you would encourage others that are contemplating having a trip like this or just going out and doing something? You did it. You survived. Um, and what would be some words of advice to those that are, want to be encouraged? Um, I think just do it. You know, I think a lot of people set barriers in front of themselves. They manufacture them like, oh, I could never do that because of X, Y, Z when really X, Y, and Z are just things that they've put in front of themselves to stay in a comfort zone. Um, but I don't know. There's so many resources now on the Internet that to be able to go on a trip, you know, before you would have to, like, find books or do all that kind of stuff. But now it's just, like, Google it. <laughs> you yeah. don't know how. Yeah, absolutely. Google it. That's a term we use quite frequently <laughs> over <do>. here. Uh, <laughs> Elizabeth, if they want to check out your blog and they can find out and read more about your brave trip, but also your your website's fantastic and, and your blog. So uh, go ahead and, and do a shameless plug here about where they can find you on the interwebs. Um, well, www.delightfullytacky.com or delightfully-tacky.com. <laughs> you know what? And I didn't put that in there. I'll have to change that. So delightfully-tacky.com. Uh, check her out. Elizabeth, thank you so much for taking the time out today to join us. And uh, just go to, go to her blog and read that. It's a really interesting adventure. Uh, have a great day. It's starting for you. <laughs> We're in the middle over here. Exactly. Thanks so much for joining us and uh, keep in touch. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. All righty.
Good stuff. And, and that's one of the differences between the live edition of the show and what will actually be uh, available a little bit later on. Uh, you'll see that dash between delightfully dash tacky. Yeah. <laughs> maybe or maybe <laughs> not, or you'll just have to, yeah. Uh, delightfully dash tacky dot com. So great stuff. Um, I want to pull up this picture. She had a, uh, some d film that she developed after her trip. It's pretty cool. I mean, you talk about vintage, and then you take some 35 millimeter. In the woods. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So very cool. And uh, I didn't talk about the interior. This is actually how I found her. I saw this on Pinterest. I was just searching an RV, a general search, and I saw this interior. And it looked like something I would decorate. However, she executes it much better than I do. It's what I imagined my RV would look like, and then she just did it so well. So I clicked on it. Of course, if you know how Pinterest works, it took me right to her website. Instantly fell in love with, with what, what she's got. The content's great. So fun. Uh, fun stuff. And uh, go out there and, and travel. Absol much like Elizabeth. Absolutely. And uh, hey, it's time for 30 seconds. It is. It's our 30 seconds of shameless or not so shameless plugs. Uh, first of all, I want to say a big happy birthday, like we said, to Mr. Dr. Seuss. Is that, can I do Mr. Doctor? Mr. Dr. Seuss, 108 years old today. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at his books and the one that's more travel oriented is, uh, Oh, the places we will go. Oh, so uh, there's uh, Dr. Seuss. A happy birthday. Uh, read a book today. Uh, of course, check out RVNN Daily. Subscribe to that. Uh, it's actually not daily. It's weekly. So maybe I should say the RVNN Weekly. Uh, subscribe. Of course, we're now on Pinterest. Check out all our boards we have for our great shows. Google+. Plus. And, of course, you can subscribe to our channel on the Roku. Uh, please give us a rating if you're up and about on there. And... Uh, Andy, we've been talking about uh, Pet Hub, which is one of our great sponsors we here. Have, and they've had such a series of uh, great ads that have come out as people have uh, uh, really shot their own videos and submit them to their contest. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is one of the entries. It's uh, a little silly, if you will. So here it is. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the future today. Now with the IT miracle of digital orthoglottal graphology systems, we're able to understand the barks and yips of more than 50 different breeds of dogs. <laughs> I'm just doing this for the cookies. Even if our pets could talk, they wouldn't be able to tell us everything. That's why there's Pet Hub. Pet Hub links your pet's critical contact, medical, and dietary information to a simple smartphone scannable QR code. Pet Hub. Protect. Share. Nurture. Alrighty, so Pet Hub, there's the tag. Uh, upside down. There it is. Uh, hop over there, pethub.com, put in the code RVN20 to receive 20% off their already low price, and it's time for the RV Business Headlines. It is indeed. You can cooperation with RVBusiness.com, which of course is the premier site for the business of RVs, but from time to time, some things of interest to consumers that we try and, and bring up. In today's news, uh, Rachel Ray has a special coach that uh, has been spotlighted uh, during an episode called the Million Pound Makeover. It is a 2012 American Revolution motor home from Fleetwood RVs. Uh, it turned out that Oklahoma City was identified as being uh, named one of the fattest places in America and so <laughs> the mayor, Nick Cornett, challenged his fellow citizens to lose one million pounds. And so the Rachel Ray Show sent a style contributor uh, to the site, and the million, mountain, million pound makeover motor coach went to Oklahoma City to greet participants and reward them for their inspiring weight loss with a trip to New York City for a head to toe makeover. So huh. that's uh, what Rachel Ray has been. I don't know if to. I would have picked Oklahoma City. I don't know. Maybe I just I haven't been there, so that maybe that's why I wouldn't have picked it to be that, one of the fattest. Uh, but uh, I guess someone keeps uh, the keeper of those uh, particular yeah. statistics. <laughs> I don't know how they rate if you were keeping statistics back from the 1960s and 1970s in the mobile space, you had to have a VW. That was uh, just one of the one of the essentials, and uh, along with tie dye shirts and some other stuff, we don't need to go into at this moment, but. Um, the VW Microbus has been reborn. A company from the UK has resurrected the iconic VW Microbus, and uh, they have uh, it's called Dub Bus uh, Dub Box USA D U B B O X USA. They have a line of uh, camping trailers inspired by the classic VW bus 
without the expense and headaches of trying to find an old Type 2. Now, the older Type 2s, the, the newest one you're going to be able to find is, is 30, uh, roughly 35 years old, and some of the older ones could be as old as 62 years old. So that's a big challenge to restore uh, that uh, type of vehicle. But if you uh, still want to get your hands dirty, uh, the uh, folks at Dubbox actually have two versions of their, of their uh, camper. Uh, one of them is a, um, uh, is a uh, do-it-yourself uh, assemble kit, and that's a little over uh, or around $9,000, and the standard dub box is uh, at uh, 18000 so hmm. you can save half by uh, doing the configuration and so forth uh, yourself. Uh, the um, uh, bus here, the one uh, that's uh, being featured, sleeps two with a uh, double bed, di dining area is large enough for four, uh, two-ring gas burners, stainless steel sink, and a pump action tap. So uh, all of that is, uh, uh, all that's put in motion. Uh, of course, you could always go to Brazil and you <laughs> could buy a Type 2 van. Uh, because they're still being built uh, you know, in Brazil. You know, what I think made those three popular was a little show, and by little, it's not little at all. It's called Lost. Have Were you ever a fan of that? Did you? No, no, I didn't really follow that, but I know people really uh, were into that. Yeah, they were, me being one of them, and they had those fans featured uh, in that show quite a lot. So... Hmm. That may be. That if you're a lost enthusiast, you might want to get the, the newer one. Might, huh? might want to check that out. The um, uh, other news of interest to consumers don't forget that KOA is teaming up with Coleman and Keystone, uh, that being Keystone RV Company. Beginning the 1st of March, you can register each week for a chance to win one of 50 weeks of free KOA camping anywhere in North America. And then once a month, there is a uh, lucky winner who gets a $500 shopping spree at Coleman.com. And then October of this year, a camper will be selected to win a $40,000 vintage travel trailer from Keystone. And you can find out more at www.koacompass.com. So that wraps it up for the news. Absolutely. Of course, you can go to rvbusiness.com to check all of those out. Uh, this is a portion of the show where we talk about social media things and uh, all things social media and relating to travel, RVing, and uh, tips that I find out there. Uh, this first one is interesting because you need to be very brave to do this. And However, if you want to continue traveling with your children, you probably need to suck it up and do this. It's uh, camping with toddlers. Uh, Andy, I must say, I that's don't have kids. Pretty, that's pretty ambitious. This is a very ambitious, and this is from National Wildlife. They talk about 10 tips for camping with toddlers. I still am a little scared, even though <laughs> they've given us tips. So here's some of the tips. They say, uh, not the time for wilderness camping. Um, with When camping with small children, choose camping spot close to home. So they're kind of saying, uh, don't be too ambitious with your how far you're going, your miles mm. that you're traveling, um, and that might be a good idea. I you think that's a good place start to start. In the, b in the backyard, and in fact, that's on our uh, uh, schedule here for uh, uh, for early this early this summer. We're going to have that uh, just set up the tent uh, right right in the backyard, just in case uh, you know some reassurance is needed uh, in yep. the night. But you know, with three and a half year old, that's uh, probably about uh, what you want to do. Exactly. And if you decide to venture off uh, more all the power to you. I also ta say take a portable crib, uh, do your bedtime rituals, take toys. Uh, watchful eye, of course, is absolutely necessary because uh, it's a little different than your living room. There's a few more things to get into and to hurt yourself. Uh, beat the heat. Uh, packing tip, which is really good, is they say put each day's outfits in a bag. That way they're there, you don't have to scramble, and you're already in a small space. Uh, pack layers, keep the light on. If you've got a smaller one, give them a glow stick. If they're a little bit older, you can trust them with a uh, flashlight and a first aid kit, of course. So some tips if you are brave enough to take your toddler camping uh, will be in our show notes. And, of course, that's something I, I uh, tweeted out. You can follow us on Twitter at RV Newsnet. We're on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash 
and, RV news. And now. you know, I'm really not shilling for one of the stories. I hadn't read the script before we went on the air, and I found out that uh, well, you'll see. You'll see. Is it the next one I'm talking uh, about? No, it's the, it's the uh, third oh, one. Oh, yeah, I yeah, think. yeah. I, I was going to make <laughs> a reference, and I actually thought that that's what you were referring to. No, no, that was just uh, in response to the first uh, thing you had. I but you know, this might be you know an active traveler. You know, it's like how do how do you take that Type A personality and mm -hmm. dial it back? Yes, uh, this next article that Andy's re referring to, referring, uh, is from Landloper. Somebody I retweeted, really interesting because I think Andy and I have the same personality types where uh, we need people to sit us down and just say, stop, smell the roses, um, because I think sometimes we don't do that enough. We, um. we try to encourage each other to do the same, but uh, this is from Landlopers. They're talking, is it possible for an active traveler to truly relax in active travelers we're talking about people that are full-time in and you know what andy if you're full-time and guess what you probably got to do you probably have a lot of times when you have to remind yourself that you've got a great opportunity to relax you've got a great opportunity to relax you probably are a work camper if you're full-timing and at the, in particular landlopers they're flying um obviously the, the rving takes a lot of stress out of booking flights losing luggage mm -hmm. i think that we have the stress factor is probably a little lower for us um, however there's still the planning and all of those things that are necessary but actually when you get there just enjoying it and, and you know i think elizabeth was a great example i think that she had a really good balance of enjoying herself yet um you know still doing the blogging and still doing all that and just having that that healthy balance of work and play and, and getting everything accomplished and if you're like me i can get stressed out just trying to do all the fun things that i know i should do which mm -hmm. is just an oxymoron um stressing out over fun things um, anyways, uh, we retweeted that from Landlopers. And this next one, uh, you can find on our Facebook page. And this is what Andy and I, I think if Andy and I actually sat down together and planned the show, we couldn't plan it better than how we do right now, we which just is separate rooms right. come together and things. Asynchronously. Yes, here. and they magically align. Uh, the Great American Backyard Campout. He didn't know about this. Um, this is going on June 23rd, and you're saying, Courtney, June 23rd. Uh, it's never too late to start planning. This is really fun. It's put on uh, by the, uh, let me see here, I don't want to say it wrong, the National Wildlife Foundation and um, what it is, it's just encouraging you to sign up and there is a registration fee and you're saying, why am I going to pay to camp in my backyard with my kids? Um, you're making a pledge to the National Wildlife Foundation to kind of say, hey, we support what you're doing. This is a lifestyle we want to encourage our kids to do and their kids, their kids' kids and so on and so forth. But the Great American Backyard Camp Out, it's uh, June 23rd, sign up, register. This is going to be fun. I know yeah. my dad... Um, my mom doesn't like the camp, so we would stay in our backyard so we didn't go without her. And um, that's just something that I really, it's fun to remember what we did, you know, just in our little side yard, made made marshmallows and went to bed by 10 because we were tired, and <laughs> but we were still at home. So um, mark down that calendar, go ahead and register for that. Andy, maybe that's the day that you should do that with that's, uh, uh, that's probably uh, That's probably when uh, when we should uh, get that on, on the schedule as, as well. Absolutely. What's this large thing here I see? Best of uh, G+, Plus. you've uh, found some stuff? I have. Um, like I said, it is uh, Dr. Seuss's birthday, and I kind of talked about the best book that I could find is, oh, the places we will go. And Andy, um, you and I both have high aspirations to get to Burning Man at some point in our lives. Yes. And I'm going to go ahead and play this video. It is so cool. I mean, I'm a big Tim Burton. I'm a big Dr. Seuss and all those kind of weird, dark things that go on in those people's heads. Uh, then you go to Burning Man. Some of those same kind of uh, quirky... actually come out in, in real life. Yeah, they come <laughs> out in real life. And uh, they actually did a reading of all oh, the places you'll go oh, at like Burning Man. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your own. And you know what you know. And you are the guy who will decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets. Look them over with care. But some you will say, I don't choose to go there your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down a not-so-good street. 
And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there in the wide open air. There we go. My audio usually works when I turn it on. Um, really cool video, and you can check that out on our Google Plus page and, of course, in the show notes. But, I mean, just I was some starting interesting to get, people I was here. starting to get into it. Yeah, just, just I know. Sorry. Just watching uh, the, the people and uh, trying to see what was, uh, what was going on and, and this structure here. Of course, all of that's constructed just uh, t you know, in, the, in a temporary way. Yeah, it is. And it's, it's so cool. And uh, this video is like seven minutes long and it's fantastic i was like you completely consumed with that i don't know if you heard it in my office you're probably <laughs> thinking what is she doing <laughs> it, she should be working and she's not um i was i was just watching this this video so pretty fantastic um i mean just interesting people if you if you know anything about burning man you know this is be a video to watch this guy cracks me up he's half half awake uh so it's a whole reading of oh the places you'll go so be inspired today celebrate dr seuss's uh one of his great books or all of them but um so yeah Check that out, and I think you'll really enjoy that. Now, Andy, um, Pinterest is something new that we've gotten into. I've, I've pinned something, and I've repinned something, and uh, my pin for the day is actually, you know, we talk a lot about small spaces, RV kitchens, mm -hmm. how you organize. Maybe we should have asked Elizabeth a little bit more about that, knowing that I had this coming. Um, I repinned a, or I pinned a show of ours, and it's uh, our RV kitchen series, and it's storage solutions for your RV kitchen. Now, Aveda is shopping for an RV kitchen, so yes. she was really, really. Um, I think that she emphasized that we can really be distracted by how beautiful these kitchens are because they are. Some of these kitchens mm -hmm. are fantastic, but then you look and there's no outlet in that beautiful backsplash, and you need that and things places to put your stuff. Right, right. And of course, uh, they're also in the process of, sho of shopping for an RV kitchen in restoring a vintage RV. And that's a whole uh, another uh, level of complexity that uh, we're going to be talking about with the Coopers here uh, on some episodes that are coming up. We've got a whole restoration episode today. And um, this next one I, I um, pinned today, and I think that it's, I think that, oh, I think it's going to get repinned a lot because I think it's a really cool, neat idea. I'm excited to talk with Aveda about this. We all know your RV refrigerator can vary if you have a Class A, a, a B, a mm -hmm. C, whatever it may be. Your fridge might be not so big. This is a great way to organize your fridge. So if you can see here, they've actually put containers in the fridge that, of course, you can stack, but it keeps your bread in, all, in one and your cheese, and it keeps ah, it. So cheese will always be in seven. Yes. And uh, bread will always be in one. Yep, and it keeps it wow. contained, and then it's easier, actually, to probably look for expired items because I know sometimes those drawers can get a little uh, messy. Or and pushed to the back. Or pushed to the back. Yep, this is a great way to keep it all in one place, and, of course, like I said, we all know those RV refrigerators can be a little tight. So uh, check out that tip, repin it, and uh, you'll make me feel good. Good. Andy, uh, we've got a few go-to meetings set we up. We do have some go-to meetings uh, set up. Uh, in fact, uh, one coming up here in about an hour with some folks on the West Coast. Uh, and go-to meeting allows you to meet through the internet for as long as you need to meet, as often as you want. And uh, because it includes uh, HD faces, it uh, allows people that have a webcam and their laptop or whatever to have uh, you know, a video as well. So you can share things on the computer desktop and you can see people's expressions as uh, you present ideas and see whether they're you know, enthusiastic, buying into it, uh, uh, kind of staring off in space or, or whatever. Uh, a wonderful program and you can try it free for 30 days. Just go to gotomeeting.com, click on the Try It Free button and remember to put in the, the code word podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T. Go to meeting is affordable meetings made easy. Very good. Alrighty, and uh, now it's time for the travel app of the day. And I, I was a little bit inspired by the whole um, nine months saving. And I, I'm a budget kind of person. I know a lot of people are budget kind of people. And especially with gas prices going up, you really can't slip much. If you've put aside X amount of dollars for a trip, to execute it properly, you've got to stay on that budget. So, Andy, today my travel app of the day is actually called 
spend. It's not a specific uh, travel app. It is a budgeting app. And um, yeah. this is for iOS devices. However, it doesn't have a Droid version, but there are Droid spending um, and budgeting apps as well. So check those out. Um, this is a great app if you want to, you know, if you set up a trip and you say, we're going to spend this much on groceries, we're putting this much aside for activities and executing it properly. This is going to manage all of that for you. And the great, it's kind of oxymoron-ish. It's 99 cents for this app. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you would think this would be a free one, but I think 99 cents is in the budget. And um, this is a an inexpensive budgeting tool to use for your trips. So I would highly encourage you to check this out. Um, it's called Spend. You've got your stats. So if you're kind of seeing a flux there, you can check all of that out. Uh, your history of expenses. Um, and it, your you can edit the amount there um, if you're kind of adjusting. So I think that this is a really practical, great app. And uh, check it out. I think I'll be using this on my next trip. I've got a camping trip coming up here at spring break time. So I think this would be a good way to stay on budget yes. and um, not go over it. Because um, it's, Im it's important to, to set your goals and meet them, right? And the cool thing is that you always have it with you. Yes. Always, always. It's always in your pocket. So uh, check it out. We've got the link there to do the 99 cent download. Uh, again, the app is called Spend. And now we've got um, a couple couple notes to tell you. Uh, in addition to today's show, we will publish, uh, we've actually published the RV Capital Talk with Tom Walworth of StatisticalSurveys.com. Really uh, an interesting show uh, if you're into the stat side of the RV business. Uh, we've got new episodes of Gadgetplex, Tales from the Road, What's Wrong with This Picture, um, Geocaching World that will all be published, but we're also recording new ones. So excited about that. Andy, are you excited yep. to see some that, that's familiar going faces? To, that's going to be a lot of fun uh, to uh, get Gunner back in yeah, the Yeah, I miss yeah. Gunner. And I got I you know, I got some new uh, additions to my family, some kittens, and I, I would be interested to see how he plays I with kitties. Let's, <laughs> let's think that through <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, make, make sure we've got uh, cats and dogs separate. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. That was, it's, a, it's a dream but not going to be a reality. Um, today, later on at 2.30, we're going to be taping a brand new episode of RV Capital Talk, of course, uh, in uh, correspondence with uh, RV, RV Business Magazine. And uh, we'll have Sherm Goldenberg in the studio for the second time this week. He just can't That's get right. enough of us. And uh, actually, later today, because of the time difference, we are recording our interview for Monday. We are going to be joined by Jay Johnston of OurOyster.com, travel bloggers, world travelers, and they are going to be starting this um, great American or great Australian overland adventure where they're going all the way uh, around the exterior of Aust Australia. We're going to talk to her about that today. Wow. Okay. Very cool. And, um, and of course, the Occasion World with uh, Andy Hit Hardhat Smith is going to be coming up uh, on next Tuesday evening at 6 30 uh, Eastern Time. Absolutely. And, and, you know, we teased uh, on the 13th. Uh, every Tuesday night we uh, have a live recording of Geocaching World. And on the 13th, we've got uh, some Cub Scouts coming to the studio. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> right. That's the week after that. That's yeah. uh, going to be an interesting time. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So we'll, we uh, aspire to teach them more about geocaching. But a way that we can show you more about geocaching is a little show we have called Geocache Radar. Why don't you tell us about what today's? I uh, may have put you on the spot there. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I I know where it is. Uh, this is uh, not far from us at all. But you know, when you get to Michigan, you think about Detroit all the time. There's a whole nother world in the Upper Peninsula, the UP. Hey, it's your Cash Radar episode GCRD 109-5. Today's cash is near Escanaba, Michigan. While in the area, you could go to the East Ludington Gallery, browse works of art from over 35 area artists and craftspersons who have been presenting quality work since 1981. Or you could head to Dauber's Pasties. The Cornish miners had properly given the credit for bringing the pastry to the Upper Peninsula in the early 1850s when both copper and iron mines were first opened. It's a hot, handheld, no-dish meal for miners who had no time to come up above ground for lunch. Or you can visit the Pictured Rocks National Seashore. Sandstone cliffs, beaches, sand dunes, waterfalls, lakes, forest, and shoreline. Groups of overhanging precipices, towering walls, caverns, and waterfalls mingled, as they say, in the most wonderful of disorder. All within easy driving distance of today's cache. Today's cache is a difficulty of three, terrain of 2.5. It's GCK1 PV. Olson Memorial Falls, originally known as Tannery Falls, it's not marked on road signs, 
and you won't get any good GPS reception due to the surrounding cliffs. The path will be slippery and muddy, but it's a 26 ribbon favorite. Bring your camera. Approximate coordinates, north 46 degrees, 24 minutes, west 86 degrees, 37 minutes. For full details, go to geocaching.com, the official global GPS geocache hunt site. For show notes on the cache, rbnewsnet.com forward slash geocache radar. Information is believed to be valid at the time of production, but conditions may change. Use common sense and caution and do not trespass. Keep geocaching a fun and family RV activity. Geocache Radar is a production of RV Newsnet and RVN TV and is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Why, why is it that oftentimes the, the uh, regional attractions involve food of some sort? Because I, I, I think we need it to survive and we tend to like it a little more than we should. Yeah, uh, may, <laughs> may it tastes that, good. That may be a, a, a big part of it. I, I think this has got to be a wonderful, worthwhile cache because 26, you know, 26 ribbon favorite uh, means that there, there have been many, many people that have uh, made the trek and uh, it's, it's got to be a well worthwhile. That's going to go on the list. Uh, in fact, we've been talking about uh, having that sometime in the latter part of June in our personal vacation plans. So uh, uh, we'll have to check that out. We are lucky duckies to be so close to Michigan. It's a beautiful state, so much to do. It is a hike to get all the way up to the UP, but well worth the drive. It's gorgeous, unless you're there in like December, which... Um, Probably still gorgeous. June, June's a better time. Yeah, June's a better time. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up for today's show. Be sure to join us on Monday. We'll be with uh, Jay Johnston of Our Oyster. But in the meantime, hop over to her website. Big thanks to Elizabeth from Delightfully Techie for joining us, us today. Have a great weekend. I'm Courtney Wallen. Yep, and uh, Andy McCaskey from RVNN TV. Thanks for joining us on RVNN Live. Today's show is brought to you by Angie's List, where you'll find thousands of unbiased reports and reviews about service companies in your area. Whether you're looking for a roofer, plumber, house cleaner, dentist, or even a doctor, Angie's List members share their experiences with each other so that you can choose the service company that's right for your job. Companies can't pay to be on Angie's List, and the reviews come from people just like you who have had experience with the companies mentioned. To find out more, go to rvnn.tv and click on the Angie's List ad.